everyone, it is yours truly, the Whiskey Coach, for yet another whiskey review. Tonight's spirit on the docket, Clyde Mays, 10-year-old cash strength, the most recent. Uh, the folks down here in Alabama released an 8, a 9, and now a 10-year cash strength. Uh, I think I said bourbon. That is incorrect. This is a, a whiskey. Why is it a whiskey, you say? Well, I'll get to that here in a second. But a really cool story that these that these guys have to tell. So, Clyde May, this guy was a really cool American story. This gentleman was born in 1922, kind of right after the Depression. Matter of fact, right at kind of the age of my grandparents. Uh, served for the country in World War II. Um, earned some medals in, in, in his time in the military. Uh, got out, I think, in 1944. Started bootlegging in 1946. And uh, it didn't become legal until 2001. <laughs> so uh, he was for some time the most, one of the most um, wanted bootleggers in the country. So yeah, and, and they do a hell of a job with branding in my opinion. Uh, they say right here on the bottle, available since 1946, legal since 2001. I think that's really cool. And then a really nice job with kind of giving you like a kind of a gilded, uh, almost like a gold label it kind of gives it a real old and authentic look in my opinion uh, the description distilled and aged for 10 years in charred American oak barrels uh, the original limited release Alabama style whiskey from Connick Ridge Alabama so what is Alabama style whiskey so that's something that really Clyde Mays and Clyde's Mays only put on the map obviously that every other type of whiskey there's typically several manufacturers out there making said whiskey to my knowledge, it's just these guys, and what he does, well, not him, he's no longer with us, but what the distillery does is adds what they call a kiss of apple. So what that is, I don't know. Uh, if it's cider, whether it's, whether it's apple juice, whether it's apple, I don't know. But that's why they can't call themselves bourbon. Um, but I, from what I hear, it's, it's not much. It certainly doesn't taste like a liqueur. It tastes more like a... A bourbon or a whiskey would but apparently it does affect the flavor to the to the extent where they're calling it their own thing and, and kind of reclassifying it a little bit but I just think that's something interesting and if I'm not mistaken this is something that won a poll some time ago that I was supposed to review for you guys like several weeks back so my apologies for the delay on that uh, with no further ado guys let's uh, let's jump into this I'm trying to shorten our the length of these videos for you guys so we can knock out more um, by the way, we're up to our small little our small little crowd. Our small little crew here has grown to over three hundred thousand, and this is uh, like I said, review number ninety eight, and uh, yeah, we're up to over thirteen hundred, you guys. So thanks a lot for the support and the continued growth and, and interest in watching me do this uh, do this crazy thing that we do. So as you can see, I am again cracking another bottle fresh for you all uh, to keep consistent. At least as much as I can. Uh, oh, by the way, nice cork pop. Um, by the way, no mash bill on this, so I can't tell you what exactly this is. I also can't tell you where exactly this comes from, who the uh, who the parent distiller is. This is a a sourced whiskey that they kind of finish with that apple kiss, so to speak. So uh, yeah, and then age statement, which is nice. They do give you that. And at 114 proof, that's a pretty robust. Pretty robust whiskey that I'm pretty excited to try. So, all right, no further ado. It smells delicious. It's funny, I don't really get apple, but I get a lot of citrus. More, I, I would say this is more orange than it would be apple if I didn't know better. But um, maybe even some pineapple. Hmm. Maybe like Fig Newton. <laughs> Almost like a raisin -y, you know. Hmm. Just enough spice to kind of keep it interesting. 
but more like an allspice, not like a pepper spice, not like a, um, not a, not a hot spice. Hell, maybe it's like a little bit of a spice cider. Maybe that's kind of what I'm getting, but it's nice. Yeah, I like how that smells a lot. So again, throughout the nosing here, I did get this opportunity to breathe a little bit. Certainly not as much as you would recommend one uh, do before tasting a bottle, but let's dive into it. A little more tannic than I would expect. Really dry finish. Kind of makes my my mouth pucker a little bit. The roof the roof of my mouth is sort of like hmm. little um, pins and needles kind of going on. Wow, that's a that's a really unique flavor that I'm not sure I'm not sure I like. Hmm. But in all fairness, I'm gonna give this a few few opportunities, but man, that is different. That is like nothing I've tried, and I have, as you know, tried a lot. Um, man, that is. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a real hard time putting putting what I'm getting in this glass into words, but I'll I'll do my best. I'd love to know more. Like what this is. Like, is this, is it rye? Is it corn? I'm imagining it's corn because corn whiskey is cheaper. If you're sourcing whiskey, you would, you would probably start there. That being said, this is an expensive bottle, guys. This isn't something that's, and by the way, pretty limited. They only make, I think, a couple thousand of these a year. But, you know, we're, we're over a hundred bucks on this bottle. Um, my first reaction is probably not worth that, that uh, price. But... It is 10 years, it's over 100 proof. That's pretty That's pretty attractive, attractive enough for, for me to pick it up off the shelf. Ah, oh, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm sort of, sort of delaying having to kind of talk to you a little about this, this taste profile because I've honestly never tasted anything that tasted like, like this or even really anywhere near, near what I'm getting. So I'll do the best I can. One more, one more taste here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll describe it, and I'll give it a score, and then, uh, and then that'll be that. Oh, man. So it's like, it's like black licorice a little bit. It's, like I said, I'm getting a lot of pins and needles still after sip number three. I'm getting pepper, like black pepper I'm getting none of the sweetness that I would expect if you add a kiss of apple again whatever the hell that means but whatever it would be you would expect it to sweeten up the uh, the finished product I don't know what it would taste like before but I would be really curious to see what the hell would it taste like you know before the apple influence um, black licorice, I mentioned, I mentioned spice, I mentioned, um, yeah, n none of those, none of those pleasant things I, am I getting, um, on the, uh, on the taste of this one. I said one more, I lied. Um, I, I'll give it this. It drinks smoother than 114 proof, so that's good. I have to keep that in mind. I try to bear that in mind anytime doing a review is, you know, keeping proof in mind. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an oddity. The, the, the final thing that I would tell you in terms of what, what I'm getting from a taste profile is maybe just like burnt wood, like almost charcoal wood, where you're getting that dryness, if you can kind of picture that. It's coming through throughout, four sips in. Uh, from a grade standpoint, unfortunately, I'm going to give Clyde a 5.4 tonight. Um, certainly respect the man for what he did and, you know, kind of his bootlegging legacy and his service to our country. And what a cool story, American kind of um, entrepreneurial spirit, all, all neat stuff. But in terms of today's product, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to go with. 
So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully I didn't disappoint many of you that wanted to see this review. But what I take pride in is always being very honest and upfront with you all. So until next time, very, very soon, I will see you. Glasses up.